So again, I just kind of like to apologise to you all. I had hoped to come up here and give you this lovely, long, well-prepared presentation, and instead I kind of have a hastily scribbled page of bullet points. So I'm going to try and do um, the best that I can with what we have, given the circumstances. Um, however, I just really quickly wanted to kind of reinforce what you were saying about um, being at the Cabinet meeting um, earlier today. It was a wonderful experience, and the children there from the Children's Parliament were absolutely incredible. Watch them have that sort of confidence to just walk into a room with the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister and completely and openly just say whatever was on their mind. I think it's really aspirational. I think it's really lovely to see that sort of kind of innocence and openness that comes from being younger that I think we kind of miss out on as we get a bit older. So it was definitely really lovely to see that. And it's great to see that in addition to having our youth parliament, we also have a very kind of active younger generation coming up to take our places. I actually felt quite intimidated before doing my speech mm -hmm. <laughs> after seeing how good they were. Um, so essentially, unfortunately, as I've, we've said, um, Due to the weather um, circumstances, we couldn't hold our consultation session that I was planning on having with Rob at our national sitting, which was going to focus on Scotland in 2030, um, what we wanted to see, kind of any potential challenges or consequences that would come across, and the potential solutions for that. Luckily, we did actually have a consultation survey prepared that is currently still open um, and will hopefully be open for a few more weeks and then we'll kind of see what we can do with that. At the moment, we have, I believe it's 121 responses from young people across 23 constituencies. So um, I'm going to be going through some of the results there. Um, I'm afraid I can't offer you a kind of broader approach. We normally manage to reach several thousands, so this is definitely not as representative as I would have liked it to be but I can assure you we will be continuing to do work and hopefully um, kind of reviewing and rescheduling our sessions so it will happen eventually and I'm sure you will get informed of the kind of updates on that. Essentially, um, the two kind of key questions that we wanted to focus on were sort of the, um, the positives. So what is the best thing that you can think of um, that comes out of being born in Scotland? What makes you proud to be Scottish? What do you enjoy? And then we also asked if you could change anything for 2030, what would it be and why? And it was very obvious, even from the limited responses we have at the moment, that there were several key themes coming across. Um, the first, like, firstly, let's start on a positive note. Let's look at what um, some young people said were the best aspects. We have an absolutely brilliant and very strong, dedicated youth work system, um, lots of volunteers who put in endless hours every day to kind of go out of their way to help improve young people's lives. That was coming up repeatedly, the support for that. In addition to obviously our wonderful free education system, having access to those higher educational tuition fees. Um, another thing I liked was quite a lot of young people said that they felt that we had quite a strong sense of identity as a country, they were quite proud to say that they came from Scotland um, and that we had a very beautiful kind of natural landscape and lots of opportunities to kind of get out and engage with nature. So those were overwhelmingly positive responses that came out of what we're currently doing right. Uh, I think we're here tonight though to kind of focus on what do we need to change or not necessarily change but improve. And again, there were several um, key themes identified there. The first one being that we do really need to start protecting our youth work. There has been numerous cuts to funding. Understandably, I know there's a tight budget, but we're losing out on key youth workers, key budgets. You know, for some of those young people, especially in disadvantaged areas, that's really all they have going for them. Especially for larger voluntary organisations like myself, the Scottish Youth Parliament, we couldn't do half of the good work that we do um, if we didn't have the budget for it. And if that was to get cut, we would all be completely devastated. Uh, so I think it's really important going forward that we kind of do reassess how important youth workers are, how important clubs are um, in kind of shaping an individual and making their lives potentially a lot easier and having that sort of social escape. Um, in, addition, in addition to that, we also covered quite heavily education and the current system and how it stands and the fact that as much as we appreciate our free education system and we are doing well, we are not really keeping up to times as well as we perhaps should be and that there are definitely changes that need to be implemented in order to make sure that we're moving with a fast-paced environment. I myself was lucky enough to be on an SQA panel. I worked directly with Martin Ware, who is the head of the SQA, um, and we kind of looked at the reassess what could potentially be 
the do assessment methods for the current National Five and higher curriculum. And one of the things that was coming out consistently was the methods of assessment. And for years, including when I was a pupil, I, I have always thought, controversial, it's complete ludicrousy. Why am I studying for a year to cram it all in for a couple of hours to then forget it by the end of next year? I, it's not an effective system, it's a very stressful system, uh, and it's a system that only certain children adapt to. Not everybody is built to memorise large chunks of information and then spill it out. So for us, our kind of key focus and what we really wanted to push was this kind of idea of method of continuous assessment. So having smaller, still formal, understanding the need for some kind of tracking system to ensure that individuals are kept on track, but in a more sort of less stressful environment in a way that children could kind of see how they were progressing throughout the year and have those opportunities to remediate and to get extra credit and to really be at their best throughout the entire year instead of hoping that on the day of the exam they are at their best and if they're not well that's just tough unfortunately. Um, in addition to that um, another major topic that came up was mental health and the sort of need for further recognition and again going back to education the implementation of a sort of more standard um, I don't know how you would put it but kind of meeting a key standard across the PHSE curriculum because I'm sure you could all agree with me that it's very varied depending on where you go to school. I remember several sessions of my PHSE were dedicated to watching Mean Girls, which is, you know, it's not a bad film, but I don't really know what that taught me. And I definitely think that there was a better use of time that could have been had there. Um, so kind of being able to educate children from a young age um, kind of raised an awareness of different mental health issues and how, how they can help and where they can go to find and access help. That again was a key problem that occurred. Um, we were finding throughout our um, na last national campaign, Speak Your Mind, uh, which focused on mental health. That was a key consistency was people were saying, well, we do think we need help, but we don't know where to go. Or there's a waiting list about five months long. So by this, especially if you're, if you're talking about if you have depression, if you have very bad depression, if you're feeling suicidal, is five months, are you still going to, in the nicest way, are you still going to be there? at the end of the five month waiting period. Um, so definitely key things to address there, although I do know and I do appreciate that the government is working very hard to kind of combat these. Um, and finally, um, there was a surprising number of young people, um, because I always thought that I was a rather strange person who liked to read books and go outside in nature while everyone else was on their technology, but there was um, a surprisingly positive amount of responses that said we really need to focus on getting young people to come away from machines, to come away from technology and kind of take time out to appreciate the landscape that we have and the opportunities for socialisation that we have and not necessarily live through our phones. Um, which unfortunately I feel is the current situation. Uh, I just kind of want to finish things up um, by talking about our current national campaign. It's called Right Here, Right Now, and it focuses on children and young people's rights. And we fully sort of support everything that you were saying earlier. We would, um, I was actually, part of my speech this morning to the First Minister was to argue for the, um, the incorporation of the UNCRC into Scots law, I think that it should have been incorporated years ago and um, you know from what we were well, the arguments that were kind of coming across it's really evident that there is a need for it it's not just kind of there to be pushed aside it's something that a lot of young people and uh, children across Scotland could really benefit from and deserve and um, so we would encourage you all to completely support us throughout our national campaign and um, to raise our voice and make sure that we are getting heard as much as we possibly can across this platform because um, I feel like I got quite close to convincing a few ministers this morning so if we keep at it, if we keep persisting, um, hopefully we'll have a declaration of intent by the end of the year, that would be fantastic. Um, I just want to kind of finish up um, so I'm not rambling on and again kind of apologise for the lack of formality in my speech today. Um, I'm normally a bit more polished um, but I just want to thank you all so much for having me here. Um, it's been a real honour to speak to you all. Thank <laughs> you.